Today I want to take a few moments and talk about uh, my word for the year for 2023. I don't know if you do this or not, but I've done this for years and our team has done this uh, together where we are uh, listening to the Lord for what his word for the year would be for us. And my word for 2023 is the word now. Everybody say now. Now. In other words, uh, embracing what is now. Uh, Letting go of all the past and living in the now. Not getting worried about the future, but living in the now. I'm going to let go. So there's some people that were part of my past, but they're not a part of my now. That's okay. Because you can only build with the people who are actually there, not the people who are not. Amen. And uh, so letting go of past uh, failures, letting go of past successes, living now, uh, letting go of past heartaches. Anybody got past heartaches that need to let go of? Uh, letting go of past victories and, and living right now, being aware right now, being in tune with heaven right now, embracing what is right now, recognizing that this is my life now, not the life I had five years ago, the life I had 10 years ago, the life I will have in five years or 10 years, but this is my life now, and I'm going to embrace everything that God has for me now. I want to invite you into that place as well. Jesus, when he was teaching us to pray um, and uh, teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 11, he said, he taught us to pray, give us this day. Everybody say this day. Give us now our daily bread, the bread we need for right now. Not the bread I needed for yesterday, not the bread I'll need for tomorrow, but the bread I need for this day day. Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Somebody say amen. So don't worry about uh, tomorrow, what's going to happen. God will take care of you today. God will take care of you tomorrow. So everybody say now. Now, I want to call you into a place called now. 2 Corinthians 6 is kind of the couple of verses that are framing this for me, and uh, I want to let it frame for us as well today. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 1 and 2 says, Working together with him, God, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says... At the acceptable time, I listened to you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now, somebody say now. Now is the acceptable time. Behold, now, say now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Time. That word actually that's translated acceptable is many places translated favor. Now is the time of favor. Now is the day of salvation. A few years back, I was, uh, had this thought uh, about what was, what is, and what is to come. What was, letting go of what was. I mean, you know, sometimes it's hard to let go of what was. We can, you know, we can hope that that would come back to us or that uh, a version of that would come back to us. But uh, letting go of what was, what's already happened has happened. Letting go of the good that was, letting go of the bad that was, and recognizing what was is over. So, Amen. Thank you for one clap right there. Appreciate that. That clap was in the right now. I just, I, received, I felt it. I received. So, so uh, I want to encourage you, and I, and I'm, I know I'm going to have a journey myself to 
Quit living in what was. Quit referring to what was in the past. You don't relive what was. Don't rehearse what was. Don't rehash what was. Don't tell the story over and over and over again. Let go of what was. Come on. You know, uh, every, everything reaches an end. Uh, chapters come to an end. Cycles come to an end. Seasons come to an end. Even Jesus taught us this idea that the old has to die out to give way to new life, right? He taught this idea, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and gives up being just a grain of wheat, it's never going to become what God intended for it to be. So I'm going to let go of what was. And I am also going to accept the fact of what is. You know, your is may not be exactly what you want, but what is, is. So you got to learn how to deal with what is because you can't keep being frustrated constantly with what is and not end up living a frustrated life. Ecclesiastes 11.3 says, if the clouds are full, they pour out rain upon the earth, whether a tree falls toward the south or toward the north, this is the point, wherever the tree falls, there it lies. Wherever the tree is, there it is. Some things just are. And we probably do ourselves a, a great favor rather than fighting constantly with what is that we would recognize, I don't need to fight what it is. I need to go with what it is, right? Gravity is, so I need to learn to cooperate with it. Electricity is, so I need to learn to cooperate. We can either fight against what is or we can cooperate with what is. So you're headed to the airport and you're stuck in traffic. It's what is. You go out of town for a few days, you come back, there is no water running in my house. It's what is, right? The kids are sick. Again, it's what is. The building project costs more, takes longer. It's what is. And I think learning to embrace what is, I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about living passive where you just let life roll over you. But the reality for a lot of situations in life is if the tree has fallen to the north and you want it to go toward the south, you might either learn to accept north or start going to work on making it face south. Now, listen, this is some hard fought lessons learned. Agitation with what is is not going to help you. Irritation with what is is not going to help. Depression with what is is not going to help you. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Frustration with what is, those are never going to be positive responses. Things may not be what you want them to be. Things may not be what you wish them to be. But you got to learn to go with now. You got to learn how to choose peace now. You got to learn how to choose joy now. You got to learn how to choose gratitude now. You got to learn to say amen now. <laughs> Come on. You know what? You got kids now. You better love it. Because one day, 
You got a job now, and you may not think it's a great one, but you better love it because it's the stepping stone to your next job, to your, to your next elevation. Your current situation is your launch point. You can live in the now, embrace what is now, and live in the peace of now, and look to your future. And then was, is, and is to come. I want to say something about what is to come, because nobody exactly knows what is to come. I speak from the place of being a bit of a visionary, and all I know is this, is that vision, your vision looks like one thing in your mind, but it comes out looking different. It, it, it comes, it may not look like exactly what you thought it was going to look like. So when you're looking at what is to come, you got to stay flexible because you don't know all the variables that are going to enter into the situation you're in. But what I do want to encourage you and I would do want to stir your faith in is to recognize this, the future is full of abundance. The future is bigger than now. Well, you might think the future is, it, things are shrinking. No, the future is bigger, bigger than the now, bigger than the past. And we have to learn, and catch this, we have to learn to adapt ourselves to a bigger future. And the reality is, if you're going to move into a bigger future, your role in the future may have to adjust in order to fit a bigger picture. If you keep shrinking the, the world down to what you're used to, you are gonna start living in a small place. You gotta get out of the center of the picture and recognize you can find your place, a bigger life in a bigger future. So 2 Corinthians 6 is kind of where all my praying and thinking is for this message and really for the season I'm in right now. Verse 1, it says, working together with him, with God, we urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. In other words, what is God doing right now? Getting in sync with this season of your life and the Bible encourages us to work with God in what he's doing in our life right now. Uh, this verse in Galatians 3 from the message, verse 11, it says, the obvious impossibility of carrying out such a moral program, which is trying to obey the law in order to be righteous, the obvious uh, uh, carrying out such a moral program should make it plain that no one can sustain a relationship with God that way. The person who lives in right relationship with God does it by embracing what God arranges for him. This, I love this sentence. Doing things for God is the opposite of entering into what God does for you. I think it'd be a beautiful thing in 2023 just to learn the lesson a little more that instead of grinding and striving in your life, that we're more in tune with what God is doing than what we're trying to do and asking God to bless it. Habakkuk had it right. The verse goes on, the person who believes God is set right by God, and that's the real life. So I want to look at these couple verses, and I want to talk about grace for now. I want to talk about favor for now, and I want to talk about salvation for now. Number one, grace for now. He says this, working together, the verse we just read, we urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. The grace of God is freely given and has to be received, has to be apprehended, has to be grabbed a hold of. Mercy is when God withholds 
judgment that's due us. And all of us are due some type of judgment uh, by whatever life we've lived. But grace is God giving what we don't deserve. Mercy is God saying, I'm going to withhold a judgment. Grace is, I'm going to put you on the plus side. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. We're all recipients of what we do not deserve. It's all yours. It's all mine by the grace of God. There's, but it's, it's by no earned effort of my own. The truth is not one of us can be good enough or strong enough or wise enough or holy enough to earn the blessing of God, to earn the favor of God, to earn the goodness of God. But listen to what I want to say to you. At the end of the day, we're going to look at it and go, it was all grace. Your life, the life you have right now, is yours by the grace of God. Your breath that's in your lungs right now is there by the grace of God. Whatever talent you have is there by the grace of God. Whatever capacity you have, whatever emotional capacity or mental capacity or, or relational capacity you have, it's by the grace of God. Your salvation is by the grace of God. Your calling is by the grace of God. I'm just pointing us to something that I want us to get a hold of. It all originates in the grace of God. None of, none of it would be available to us if it weren't for God being a God of grace. All the plus side of our life is by the grace of God. I've always appreciated this idea that of all the possible postures, the God of all things could take toward us, I'm glad he chose grace as his disposition toward us. Grace is a zone that we move into, that we live in, that we breathe in. God's grace is an allocation by the heart of God to each one of us. And I know sometimes people look at grace as basically forgiveness, but can I just tell you the gifting you have is by the grace of God? Your identity comes out of the grace of God. The power to do what's right comes out of the grace of God because the Bible says the law awakens sin but grace overcomes sin. The key to abundance is grace abounding in your life. Grace, the Bible says, builds your house. Grace makes you promise-oriented, not just performance-oriented. Grace gives us the ability to overcome bitterness, to let hurts go, to move on from the past. Our grace allows it. With, by grace, you can accept your acceptance. You might have a list of things that you did or didn't do that didn't line you up for being accepted by God, but I just want to remind you today, your acceptance by God is by His grace. The Bible says, by grace, you reign in life, Romans chapter 5. Grace, the Bible says, shows up in your weakness. Anybody feel any weakness in any arena of your life? Hey, listen, the Bible says that's where the grace of God shows up. Grace makes what is dead come alive. We just sang a song about resurrection power. Grace doesn't just make what's bad good. Grace makes what's dead come alive. 
God's, God's, God's throne, God's authority, the Bible says, is a throne of grace. I'm just pointing to the idea that there is grace in God's interaction with us, and there is grace for your now. When you marry truth with grace, you get liberty. You get a free spirit. When you marry truth with the law, you get legalism, which is a total bondage. All the promises of God come by grace. All the favor of God comes by grace. Anybody appreciate the grace of God? Come on. Your, your healing comes by the grace of God. Your provision comes by the grace of God. Your breakthrough comes by the grace of God. I'm just boasting on the grace of God this morning. Your next level will come by the grace of God. Abundance for your life will come by the grace of God. Your future is planned by the grace of God. It's all wrapped up in the grace of God. And all of it comes as a gift from God. I did a little Christmas message, which probably seven of you actually saw on Christmas Day. But God is a gift-giving God. And learning how to receive the gift of God into your life, whatever arena of your life it is, is one of the most powerful lessons we could ever get a hold of. It all comes as a gift. It has to be received by faith. Quit trying to earn with good behavior what grace wants you to receive by faith. See, behavior is the wrong currency. I just finished a, a Bible reading program this past year, had seven, eight chapters that I had to read almost every day that I got to read. I had to read. I got to read every day. But I'm not earning brownie points with God because I read eight chapters of the Bible today. Behavior is the wrong currency. Please get this. You're, you, don't, you don't behave your way into the goodness of God. Your faith receives the goodness of God. It's all by, you got to step into understanding it's grace territory. Your strength might be able to accomplish something, but whatever your strength accomplishes, your strength has to maintain. And what God gives by his grace, God's grace maintains. I'm just encouraging you for 2023 to know that there is grace for now. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by human effort. Amen. I, I'm truly convinced that God wants to do God things in our lives. Where there's no other explanation than people go, that has to be the grace of God. You got to get a revelation of grace. Grace is, uh, it, it's not, it's not just a license, it's not just a, a license to do whatever you want to do. It's not just a license to sin and there's no penalty. Grace is an empowerment. Grace is a zone. God's grace, an allocation by the heart of God to each one of us, Come on, let's make 2023 a year of God's grace now. And the second thing I want to talk about for a moment is favor now. So 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, at the acceptable time or at the time of favor, I listened to you on the day of salvation. I helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the time of favor. I love when Jesus showed up and uh, with the Holy Spirit 
anointing on his life. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. How many of you know the same spirit that was upon Jesus is now on you as a believer, right? And Jesus gave up his being God, put his arm behind his back, if you will, and said, I'm going to live like a man anointed by the Holy Spirit to show you how to live. So Jesus showed up, says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, just like the spirit of the Lord is on you, because he anointed me to preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim release to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden. And listen, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord to proclaim the year of God's favor. Jesus says, I am anointed to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. I have an anointing. You have an anointing to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus anoints us. God is a God of favor. He desires to pour favor out on your life. Favor is when God blesses the work of your hands. Favor is when people are drawn to you. Favor is when people look on you with favor. Because I hope you know this by now. It's not just what you know, it's who you know. And not only is it who you know, it's who likes you, right? Favor is when life is working for you. Favor is when things are going your way. When you're walking in favor, people are drawn to you. When you're walking in favor, financial resource is drawn to you. I said When you're walking in favor, opportunities are drawn to you. And when I look at Jesus in this little section of his life and these words of his, I see these four elements, the the element of favor, but there is an anointing and there is a proclamation and there is an idea that this is my year, the anointing of favor. Who would go for it? You are anointed with favor. It's not anything that you earn. It's a gift that God gives. You're anointed not only to have favor, but to proclaim favor. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to get up in your face just for a minute. You got to change the words that are coming out of your mouth. And you got to declare and proclaim the favor of the Lord in your life. Come on, get favor in your mouth, right? Come on, I don't want to rehearse all the aches and pains of living life. There's plenty of them. I don't want to keep rehearsing those over and over again. I want to get favor in my mouth. Favor, a proclamation of favor. So I'm going to encourage you to give your faith to favor. Give your heart to favor. And he says, he says, this is the year of favor. And I want to call you into this. If you're, if you're a guest here, God bless you, we love you. Hopefully, the Holy Spirit will draw you to this place. But let me just talk to those of you that are, that are in the house, that are, that are joined by God to this place. This is gonna be a year of favor for our church. Because this is what I know. When you come under the umbrella of a house of favor, favor gets on you. So you, 
you can, you can proclaim favor and you can receive favor. So I'm going to encourage you when you talk about our church, give your mouth to declare favors on the house. Come on, I'm going to live in favor. I'm going to, the favor's going to be in my heart. Favor's going to be in my head. Favor's going to be in my mouth. You might say, Pastor, you don't know what's going on in my life. All I know is God is bigger than whatever is going on in your life. And God's favor can make a difference in your life. Psalm 5 verse 12 says that you blesses the righteous man, O Lord. You surround him with favor as with a shield. Your first words in the morning ought to be, favor is all over me today. Favor is all around me today. <laughs> Psalm 90 verse 17 says, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. I want to encourage you in whatever your building, whatever your work is, whatever you put your hand to, to build with an expectation of favor. Maybe 2022 didn't feel like a year of favor to you, but 2023 can be and will be a year of favor. Come on, Holy Spirit, anointed believers with the power to proclaim favor over your life. And I'm just convinced that the favor of God that is on our life, it's not favor for what used to be. It's not even favor for what is going to come, but it's favor for right now. And then the last thing I want to talk about for just a moment, and then I want to pray, is salvation now. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, again, he says, at the favorable time I listened to you on the day of salvation, I helped you. Anybody a candidate for God's help? Hello? <laughs> I am. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I love Ephesians 2.8. It says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not even of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Grace gives, faith receives. Come on, grace gives, faith receives. Salvation is not just a ticket to get to heaven. Salvation is includes all that God has to offer to you and to me. Salvation includes your healing. Salvation includes your blessing. Salvation includes favor, God helping you. Salvation causes us to prosper. You know, what I think is interesting is that the grace you've been saved, by grace you've been saved through faith, even, even the faith is not of you. I want you to see this. Romans 12, 3, Bible says, God has allotted to each of us a measure of faith. You might say, I don't have much faith. You do have a measure. And I just want to remind us today that God is always previous. God is the originator of all. What made me surrender my life to Jesus when most of my family really did not make that choice? I just think God chose by his grace. Salvation is all about God's work and has very little to do with my work. 
Grace, an understanding of grace makes much of God. And a leaning on my works makes much of me. And I've been walking with the Lord long enough to know that when I look back, I can see the previous of God. God lining it up. God setting up the dominoes. You know what he's I didn't know at the time what those dominoes, I didn't even, sometimes there were dominoes that were removed. And I was like, God, is that, is this a good thing? I look back on it and I go, yes, it was. Uh, could I ask you to go to this zone where you would recognize that God is working on your tomorrow today. God is, God's previous is setting things up. God, God's up to something great. And you're, I'm not saying you won't face obstacles and I'm not saying you won't face enemies to your life. But what I am saying is that there is favor for now. And there is grace for now. There is salvation for now. Hey, could I ask you to take a moment? Could we pray together? Would you open up your heart for just a moment? Maybe bow your head. Just take a minute. Father, I'm praying for every person that is in this room, every person that is watching online. Father, right now, you've got grace for us right now. God, this last year may have been a tough year, but this year is a year of favor. This year is a year of grace. This year is a year of salvation. This year is a year of God helping. And I'm praying that these words, these ideas, Father, these promises go beyond us getting so focused on ourselves and we would draw near to a great, loving, grace-filled God. Open our hearts, God, to see what you have in store for our lives. Hey, with your head bowed, your eyes closed, I just gotta take a minute. If you're here today, maybe you've never surrendered to Jesus before. I would love to pray with you. Come on, let's get your life in the hands of a God who knows how to look after you. Maybe you're here today and you can look back on a time where you used to be close to the Lord, closer than you are today. And you know it's time for you to get back on board in your relationship with God. I'd love to pray with you. Or maybe you're just here and you say, you know, I just don't feel, I hear you saying all these things, Pastor, but I don't feel confident about where I stand with God. Would you pray with me? If, if any of that speaks to you and you just say, come on, first day, 2023, what a great day to say yes to Jesus, to come back to Jesus, to be sure you're right with Jesus. If that's you and you say, Pastor, would you pray with me? I wanna open my heart to Jesus. Just lift your hand real high all over this room and say, that's me, pray for me, God bless you. Come on, anybody else that just wants to say yes. Anybody that wants to open up their heart to the living God, anybody else, God bless you. Come on, anybody else, God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's pray this prayer together. Maybe you lifted your hand, maybe you didn't, but I think this is a great prayer for all of us to pray. Everybody say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I want you in my life as my Lord. I know I've sinned, I do mess up, but I'm coming to the cross where you have paid the price for my forgiveness. I receive today a fresh start and a new beginning. Help me become the person you created me to be. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord.